Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. I'm Angela Wolf, and we are at your side virtually. Did you have a great weekend? My goodness, it is beautiful here in Southwest Michigan. You know it is if I'm smiling because the sun is out and the flowers are coming up. So if you hear a lot of noise, it's because I put a bird feeder out in front of my office. <laughs> and it sounds like, I don't know, the planetarium or something, but it's awesome. So today we have a great show. If you've never been here before, say hi, say where you're from. I am a brother brand ambassador and we have Joanne Banco, another brother brand ambassador joining today. And she is going to give a little deciphering between the digital dual feed foot, which we've had so many questions on and a few other things about that. So I'm going to bring Joanna, but if you've never been here before, say hi, say where you're from. And I believe I can see all of your comments on YouTube and Facebook, which is awesome. I see you all rolling in. And uh, so you can ask your questions as you go along. I won't interrupt Joanne, but I will make sure that we take breaks to answer your questions. So welcome everyone. I see that even Facebook is behaving today, which is fantastic. All right, so let's not make Joanne wait. I see her smiling face. Hey, Joanne, hey. how are you? Hi, everyone. Great to see you. It's great to be here. I got all dressed up for you today. Oh, what are you wearing? <laughs> well, just like a fancy blouse. Truth be told, I got jeans on on the bottom. So, <laughs> you know, it's like, why not? I put earrings on. <laughs> yeah, well, okay, so um, I'm wearing my Rachel twin set, which we've been doing a sew along for. And I did a little different hack on this one where I played with the stripes. I love it. Truth be told, I'm wearing leggings and tennis yep, shoes. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. Hey, why not? You only have you only have to get half dressed these days, right? I know. You know it's kind of scary though. I have to say it's kind of scary because I was with my mother this week and we were having so much fun chatting and everywhere you gotta go to grab the mask. She was one day she said, she goes, you know, it's kind of scary because when you put the mask on, you don't kind of look down. She goes, sometimes I have to double check if I'm wearing pants. And I laughed right out loud because I thought every day I have to check that. <laughs> check that. No boxer shorts, right? Crazy <laughs> well, days. Man, speaking of beautiful things, that apron behind you is gorgeous. Oh, it's just fun. I like to keep this on my dress form so that, uh, you know, it just it just uh, makes me feel happy looking at it. <laughs> Very fun. Oh, thanks, Bambi. Phyllis. Phyllis said it before we even talked about it. At least you're wearing pants, Joanne. <laughs> well, you know, it's fun. I got my uh, when I had my graduation picture, I did the same same because it was all you know. We didn't back in those days. They only did you know your face. Today they do all these fun things where you're out in the park and there's trees and gazebos and all. But I got all dressed up, like totally dressed up. And the waist up and on the bottom, I had just I, my raggedy old jeans on, so I was comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Joanne, uh, you are going to uh, give us a little tutorials. I even have the little foot out ready, but uh, right. why don't you tell them what you're going to talk about today? Because I think this comment and questions have come up so often, and I'm so glad we're focusing a whole show on this. Yep, yep. We're going to be a little bit, a little bit, you know, detailed today. You know me. I like all, I like those nitty gritty details. But we're going to be talking about walking and rolling feet. Okay, walking and rolling, because that's really what makes the difference between the digital dual feed foot, which we know is the move it foot, and a regular walking foot. One of them rolls and one of them walks. So we're going to, you know talk about each one and we'll talk about some of the accessories that you can get with it. And um, I, hopefully I will be able to help everybody understand the difference between the two, why you would use one, why you would use the other and how it'll all fit into your sewing repertoire. And you know, that's a big, that's a big deal because everyone always thinks that the move it foot is the same thing as a walking foot. And it's not, it's not at all. That's true. And you know what, what I like to do is try to help avoid frustration because when something's not working right, we know there can be all different reasons for it. Very often it is user error. You know, we're, we're doing something wrong. I'll never forget one time I went and I put the walk, the dual feed foot on and it, and my fabric was not moving at all. And I was like, what in the world is going here? I had forgotten to plug it in. So we'll talk about that too. But <laughs> you know, you, you have to set things up properly, but you also have to match things properly. So if, if, if a foot, or an accessory is designed to do certain things, 
yeah, sometimes we can bend the rules or break outside of that, you know, corral a little bit. But by and large, we need to kind of understand what, how, how it was engineered, why it was created the way it was created, and then match that up to the projects that we're using it for. Hopefully that makes sense. But um, I'm open to questions today. Like I said, you know, we'll, we'll make sure we, we try to get this really, really clear. And then I promise to do a follow-up uh, blog post on my website this weekend, because in that way I can add links for everything that we've talked about and reference different materials that have already been written on this. And then of course, everybody can watch the replay too. So that's wonderful. And I put just so you all know, and I'll put it up again later, but down below is right now it's the blog for brother, which is being switched over to brother. So's, but for now you can still go there. And then uh, you have Joanne's website there for the blog and you have mine as well. So that's how you find us, right? Exactly. And my understanding is that everything that is on there currently, you'll still be able to find through the links that have already been provided. So if it's an older link, it should roll you right back into the same, the same um, instructional sheet or tutorial. So hopefully. Right. There was hopefully a lot of great information on there. So Hey, Reen, uh, a Hi. lot of great information. So at least we'll be able to go back and see that. So I'm right. seeing, seeing lots of friends on here today. So welcome, everybody. So glad to have you all here with us today. I agree. So why don't we get warmed up by just talking a little bit about a walking foot first, okay? And then we'll talk about the digital dual feed foot, also known as the move it foot, okay? So I have a whole bunch of feet here that I brought um, with me to show. And we're, we'll show later um, the dual feed foot on a machine, but that's kind of the first question that we have to answer is what foot fits what machine? So if you are talking about a standard, ordinary, let's call it a, a vanilla, <laughs> you know, regular standard walking foot, which I'm showing right here on camera, this foot works on virtually every machine imaginable. I mean, old, new, and everything in between. The thing you would want to look for in a walking foot to match your machine are, are two things. First of all, the shank height. So that is where the um, attachments screw onto your machine. Now, most of us are, are spoiled by feet that snap on these days, and many, many, many feet snap on your machine, but there are still a few that require you to take the screw out of your um, foot holder and replace it with um, the foot and then replace the screw and screw on the foot. So there are high shanks and there are low shanks. And you will know immediately if you put a low shank foot on a high shank machine, because when you lower the presser foot, it will not touch the, the feed dogs, okay? So they make an adapter, which I'll show in a minute here, so if you are selecting or you know choosing a low shank walking foot and you're using it on a high shank machine, you will need to use that adapter so that it fills in that extra space and allows your foot to, to settle down flat. So that's the first thing you need to make, make sure of that you are using the right shank. Now, if we got into you know all kinds of other machines back in the day, there were slant shanks and super high shanks and all that, but we're talking in the brother world and in the brother world, there is low shank and high shank. And the vast majority are low shank, but our newer models in the top of the line range and in that higher range of machines are high shank. So they're, they are definitely different and they do require that, that adapter. And so the next thing you want to look for is the width of your throat plate. So Throat plates and feed dogs are two separate sizes. Most of them are for seven millimeters. So that means if you measured the little opening where your needle goes down and zigzags in between, it would measure seven millimeters. There are some machines that are five millimeters. If you have a seven millimeter machine, you want a seven millimeter walking foot. If you have a five millimeter machine, which are then the lower ends, then you want a five millimeter walking foot. So far, does that make sense, Angela? It sure does. And actually, it's really interesting that you talk about that because um, I was just working on an older model machine, uh, helping my mom work on one of her old machines, and totally different. Yeah. Than, and and one two big things that happened there was the shanks different than all the feet that I have uh, because it was a different brand, and it was an older. I mean, just 
different. It doesn't matter. It could be a new machine. They if they have a different shank, the shank mm -hmm. was different. And also, what you mentioned about the feed dogs is kind of funny. Uh, we were talking, and someone said, uh, "You know, every time I sew, I have to pull my fabric through." And I go, "Well, you shouldn't have to pull your fabric through." The feed dogs were down. You can't. Uh -huh. and yeah. They, they just thought the machine was so old. It was like one that you hit the pedal and pulled through. So I was like, yeah, no. Oh, <laughs> my. It's not working. So two That's good funny. points out there. Well, and then that brings me to the to the next, um, you know, real special detail on the walking foot is that the walking foot has teeth. Let me bring it really close to the camera there. And you can see those teeth. And those teeth match up with the feed dogs. So literally they 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 work like jaws the teeth from the feed dog come down the teeth i mean i'm sorry the teeth from the uh walking foot come down the teeth from the feed dogs come up and they lock together when it's forming a stitch so it advances the fabric evenly and that's why it's also known as an even feed foot so even feed walking foot are the exact same thing and what it means is those teeth match up and so instead of your foot, your presser foot being flat and just pushing your fabric layers through, it literally grips your fabric layers. So a lot of people think of it for, for quilting. And obviously, if you're doing quilting, you are definitely going to want a uh, some type of a walking foot. Definitely. So that, um, you know, allows it to grip those layers that have, you know, puffy and you've got you got batting and you got backing and you got seams and grip that and carry it through the fabric evenly. So um, I see Lucy's asking why the difference in shank um, just because they make it that way. Why do they make, uh, you know, big cups and small cups and, you know, <laughs> and bigger cups, cups and big like <laughs> <laughs> chairs, <laughs> but it's just uh, it, you know, I don't really know that I don't know the ins and outs in that. I only know that that what you need to be concerned with is your machine, which is that's great. When I worked in a sewing shop, we had to answer questions on every machine imaginable. And, and, and very often, especially when there was a, a quilt class happening, um, people would want to know, you know, what what walking foot do I need for my machine so that I could do quilting? And like I said, there was a walking foot for literally I never had to say no to somebody. I never had to say, sorry, we don't have a walking foot for your machine because they're they're out there for everybody. So remember that, that's what it's doing for you. It's gripping, it's gripping. So it's it's clinging to, to all of your fabrics at the same time as that stitch is forming. The next thing that's different about the walking foot is this little arm. So this arm has to go around your needle bar where your needle um, uh, screw is. And that tells the teeth when to come up and when to come down and it's all timed perfectly with the the um, stitch on your machine okay so let's i got a few more things to tell you about about a walking foot and the the next thing i want to show you is that this particular foot i'm gonna bring it again close to the camera this particular foot is what's called is it focusing okay yep it just focused you're good okay it's called a closed toe walking foot all right what does that mean well, it's just simply has a little bit more coverage in the area where the needle forms and there's actually, you know, more metal there. So when it comes in contact with the fabric and the stitch is forming, there's more pressure from the top side on your fabric. And that's what um, that's what you need when you really need uh, a little bit more intricate stitching. You know, the walking foot, we talked about using it for for quilting, but this is an ideal foot for sewing slippery fabrics. If you sew suede cloth, if you sew satin to velvet, if you're sewing lining to wool, anytime, anytime you have a tricky situation where you're sewing layers together and they're they're tending to shift stripes plaids, all those things where, you know, you're kind of hanging on for dear life as you're, as you're sewing those layers, you might have like 50 pins in there trying to keep them all together. Well, the walking foot will help you with that, no matter what your fabric is, because of the action of those teeth gripping the fabric. So I that- have, I should have used it on this, trying to match these stripes up the outside of my arm. That would have been great. Yeah. I mean, the center seam, that would have been perfect. I love what you did in the center there, by the way. That is really cute. No, walking really. through would have been great. <laughs> that's, 
definitely. Um, I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, again, when I when I was you know working in a shop and I was helping people with their machines, I had a lady come in one day, and I don't remember what she was sewing, but whatever it was, it, it was tricky. It was tricky. And it, she wasn't quilting, but she was sewing some layers. And I, and I said, well, I got the right foot for you for every tricky, tricky situation. So I sold her a walking foot. She went home. She came back a few weeks later. She was kind of just, this is kind of her personality. So I knew her really well, but she came in kind of yelling at me. She goes, Joanne, Joanne, why didn't you tell me about that foot sooner? I use it all the time. <laughs> I was like, I'm glad you're happy. <laughs> you know, that's her way of expressing that, you know, she just really, really made use of the walking foot and wish that she had used it a long time ago. Yeah, I see Reen saying cuddle fabric. Cuddle fabric is very slippery. It has nap, it has pile, anything that wiggles, squiggles, squirms, slides, <laughs> all of those things. You know, have a walking foot on hand. You want, you definitely want to use the closed toe version if you're doing, you know, straight sewing and seaming things together. Now, there is another option though, and that is an open toe walking foot. So let me bring that one up to the camera. Here you go. There you go. Yeah, we can see that great. Okay, so you can see there is no metal bar there. That is all open. So just like an open toe decorative stitching foot that does two things for you. First of all, it gives you more um, you know, visibility there so that you can actually see where you're going and see where you're stitching. So if you're using, you know, some some kind of situation where you need to see that stitch, um, you can you can use this this foot for it. Now, the main rule with the two feet that I have showed you so far today is that these feet are designed, again, I'm speaking for the brother world. Um, in the brother world, I won't, won't speak to others, but um, in the brother world and, and it, you know, it, this, you're going to find this to be pretty much across the board. These feet are designed for sewing straight forward. So you can use a straight stitch and you can use a zigzag stitch, but any other stitch that goes backwards and sideways is off the table. OK, these feet were not designed for that because of the way the teeth are made to to cling to the uh, feed dogs. And that arm is designed to coordinate the timing. It's designed for straight and zigzag. No decorative stitches. OK. That's so, a good tip, too. That's a really good tip. So if you do a lot of um, all of those things that I talked about, certainly if you sew with a variety of different fabrics, I would highly recommend a closed toe walking foot for sewing seams on tricky fabrics. Absolutely, mm -hmm. positively recommend this. If you tend to use your walking foot for things, um, you know, where you're quilting and you want to be able to, you know, really see where you're going, then you would you could use the open toe foot. If you have an open toe foot and you try to use it, you know, just put that so you can see it better. If you have an open toe foot and you try to use it for sewing velvet to satin and uh, you know lining lining slippery fabrics or cuddle and things like that, you're really not going to get the full contact that you need to form that stitch. So just remember that this is really more for fabrics that are are like like your quilting layers so that you've got something where that foot doesn't really have to sit really 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 flat and tight where it's forming the stitch okay? hey Joanne, do you, do you both can you put both those feet up next to each other That's sure yeah alice then you can kind of see them both together and are we getting some questions yeah there are a few mm -hmm. okay let's do let's do a few before they get too lost so i see one can you use it with the serpent serpentine stitch well let me say that that's a, that would be like like bending the rules a little bit um, <laughs> because technically that foot moves forward and it doesn't really move backwards. It does move quite a bit from side to side. So I have used it, but you but you have to be a little bit careful with it because um, the again the the contact with the foot is really designed to be right within that. Um, center area of the, the opening. And when you use a serpentine stitch, even though it's only doing seven millimeters, it's, it's so, it can be swirled so wide that it can get a little bit off track. So I have used it, but I've only used it on small areas. If you use it on a long area, you might find that you're um, starting to get, you know, a little bit of shifting in your stitch. Yeah. So, 
So, and Jan, Jan just wanted to know, kind of similar to when we use embroidery, do you use a topper for the, these high, high nap? Fabric. I don't because when you're usually when you're when you're sewing those layers, you're sewing from the wrong side. You know, you're sewing right sides together. So you're facing the, the wrong side. So for I'm talking standard seams today. If yeah. you were doing something different on there. Yeah. You you know, there's no reason why you couldn't use a topper. But I agree. I agree. Okay. For sewing, you really don't need it. <laughs> and I see so Gail. She uses her hers, uh, her walking foot a lot. Yeah. Bias binding. Thank you for mentioning that, Gail. That. The walking foot, the regular standard walking foot is one of my favorite feet for um, sewing anything on the bias. Because again, what does the bias do? You know, you've sewn all those gorgeous gowns and made beautiful things with, with bias. It, it, it moves, it wiggles, it wiggles, it squiggles. And what did I say before? If it wiggles, if it squiggles, if it slips, if it slides, grab yeah. that, grab that walking foot. Now there may be an alternative for some of us, but I'll talk about that in a minute. But um, here's a good question from Sophia. Can you adjust the length of the walking foot? I'm assuming you're talking about the stitch length. No uh, stitch length. You can adjust. Yep. You can. And if you're using a zigzag, you can adjust your, your stitch width. But I think what she's referring to is, can you adjust the height? No, it's, it's, it's totally built into the foot that it's going to work just, you know, those, those teeth are going to grab every fabric the same way. There is no adjustability on this. And okay. actually, that was height and someone else asked length, though. <laughs> so I was reading. I was multitasking. Shame on me. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, I mean, we're getting some great comments and some great questions. Um, yeah. So Claudia what, says, do we need to use um, two walking foot to do the, or do the feet interchange? Um they're two separate feet. So like I said, if you're going to do all of those things that I talked about, you may need two separate feet. However, I'm going to show you another another alternative in a second here. OK, because we're going to talk about everything available. And what I want to do is like tell you everything available. You Some of you already have some of these. And if you have what you have, great. Now you know how to use it. But, you know, once you, you learn a little bit about everything, then you can decide um, what you want to do there. They do not snap on, they screw on. Remember I talked about that shank there? Um, you have to screw, you have to literally attach this foot with a screw. And you always have to make sure that the, the, the arm is surrounding your needle bar. Another great question. Um, yep. <laughs> Can you shalaka? put the I think it's in the metal or do you have to <laughs> You should always sew at a slower or medium speed when you're using the walking foot because there's a lot of jiggling movement going on there. And um, I have actually seen walking feet wear out, you know, by, I mean, you know, everything has its life. Right. And, and it, you know, it could, it could, it could get used to, to the point of needing replacement. That takes a lot, a lot, a lot of time. But um, if you sew at a slow to medium speed, you, your foot will last a lot longer because you won't be, um, you know, moving those parts too much around. Okay. I, I, see some, I see some double questions. So hopefully we got to those. And if you rolled in late, don't worry. Uh, you can go back and watch this over too, because this is great information. And a lot of you are asking about the move it foot. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. We're almost there. Okay. So Lucy already kind of stole my thunder here because the next foot I want to talk about is um, a foot that is brand new. In fact, I just got mine just not too long ago at all. And so I'm going to hold this one up to the camera. This is the new brother dynamic walking foot. So Ooh. if you look, it looks very, very much like the standard walking foot that I already showed you, except that it, and as far as the design of it, but it's got some differences here that are really important. First of all, it's all metal. And you know what? When I lift this one, if I had a scale here and I had a scale for these two, wow, that this metal one is a lot, lot heavier. And, and that's because it is built to do more than just straight and zigzag. It's got on the bottom, I'm gonna show you the bottom of this foot now. It's got extra teeth. So instead of just the two teeth on the side that match up with the, the feed dogs, you know, your feed dogs actually have more than just the two teeth on the side, but those are the main, um, main feeding mechanism for your machine. This one has another little extra piece there that, that matches up with the mechanism on your machine. So this foot, the new dynamic walking foot, 
will not only sew straight forward, it will also sew backwards and side to side. So we can use this foot with decorative stitches. It is super like cool. That. This is a low shank foot. So, so it'll work on all the seven millimeter low shank brother computerized machines is what it was designed for because it's designed for you to use with decorative stitches. Where do we find decorative stitches? Mostly on the computerized machines. Okay. So seven millimeters, it doesn't work for, for five millimeters, it's designed for seven millimeters, seven millimeter low shank. However, if you look, I have got this attached to that shank adapter, which you see how I've got the big screw in there and I've got an extra uh, hole on the top waiting for yeah. another screw. This, this little um, shank adapter, it's called the S adapter. It's designed to raise low shank feet to a high shank. So our Luminaire is what? It's a high shank machine. So if I want to use the dynamic foot, I'm going to need to add the adapter. But absolutely, this foot will work on all of our brother high shank machines just by simply adding that little adapter, which happens to come with the high shank machines. They give you the adapter and the extra screw so that you can attach that. So this foot really takes the place of both of these that I showed you. Because not only does this foot have the closed toe version, it also comes with an open toe attachment. So this literally pops off and this one will pop on. So you now have, you, you've got like ever, the best of all worlds wrapped up into one if you have the dynamic walking foot, because now you can do forward stitches, backward stitches, decorative stitches, high shank machine, low shank machine, closed toe, open toe, closed toe or open toe on your walking foot. So if you don't already have these, I would highly suggest getting this. Make that sense? Very much so. Some people are asking if you have the part number. They, they can call their brother dealer and get this. I do one. actually, though. The, the new dynamic foot is SA101. All right, I'll put it in the comments SA101. So a very, very heavy duty foot. And um, hopefully I've explained it well enough that you understand that you can use this basically in every which way that you would like to use it. So there, there's like, there's really, you know, there are limitations to the regular walking foot, but there are, you know, if you have it already and, and it fits your, suits your needs, fine. If you, however, want to expand your sewing repertoire and you would like to be able to do decorative stitches with a walking foot, which is, you know, adds a whole dimension of fun. If you're doing it on quilts, you know, it's wonderful, but this will work on, all kinds of different fabrics. Um, I've seen it used on sheer fabrics, on, you know, on <laughs> cottons, on t-shirt knits, all those things. So I I'm going to give one little caution though, because I think this is really important. I've done so many things with decorative stitches. I love using decorative stitches in the machines, but make sure you understand that you still need to stabilize your fabric. Even though you're using a walking foot, your fabric still needs to be stabilized if you're doing decorative stitching because you're basically doing baby embroidery on there, okay? So you wanna be careful with that. And then the other thing that you wanna realize with the new dynamic walking foot is it was not designed for our sideways motion stitches. So we have some decorative stitches that, you know, can go like this wide, you know, they're, they're huge, they're big, and that's because they're moving, the feed dogs are actually dancing sideways, you know, to create that, that stitch. So this is only designed for seven millimeter decorative stitches. That's what it's designed to use, okay? Because you, you have to have full contact with all of the teeth, all three of those pieces, the, um, you know, the two that line up with your major uh, feed dogs and then that extra, that extra piece and the heavy duty, you know, makings of this foot are what really make it work for, for those uh, decorative stitches. Okay, hopefully so, we got. Did you, this doesn't come with the Luminaire. No, this is a brand new foot. Just came out, optional accessory. Yeah, that's what this I thought. Is, I mean, I never, because what a lot of times when I get the machines or you and I get the machines to test, 
they're, they they don't come like brand new in the box. So I don't know everything that goes in there. And I'm like, I do not remember getting that foot. <laughs> yeah. No, this is brand new. This has just been out just a very, very, very short period of time. Um, it was, it was super popular as soon as it came out. So I was on the list to get it, but I literally just got this um, very, very recently. Okay. So that's the walking foot. Now there are certain machine models that use our friend, our favorite friend. Oh yes. <laughs> the digital dual feed foot. Okay. So I see some people asking here, you know, oh, you know, why would you want this, that, or the other? Well, this foot doesn't work on every machine. It only works on certain machines. And we'll talk about why in a minute here. The feet that I just showed you, there's there's every machine there's there can use one of those feet one or more of those feet okay so once you know what your machine is now you can you know see what what will what your options are because that's what i'm sharing all the different all the different options and no we don't have prices here um uh i forget who's asking um miss miss craps scraps Scraps looks like scraps. <laughs> we don't have prices here. You need to call your brother dealer for this because these are brother, uh, you know, brother accessories and they are genuine brother accessories, which is very important. They're designed by brother for brother. So make sure you, you realize that you definitely want to visit your brother dealer for these. And then they can, they can, you know, they could explain the same things I'm explaining to you and tell you, tell you the whys and wherefores and tell you what, what is available for, your particular machine. And you could call them too, if you don't have a local one. So definitely, definitely. And they are your, they are your best, um, you know, best friend when it comes to knowing what, what you can use on your personal machine. Cause even sometimes the website, you know, isn't, uh, you know, what you find on the internet isn't as up to date as what the, what the dealers have. So that's, that's really important. Okay. All right, so now this baby. This is a whole different animal. So this I would my favorites. I would have to say these two, they're friends. They like each other. Okay. They, they but they are not twins. They are not kissing cousins. They are not, you know, interchangeable. They are totally, completely separate. So in my sewing world, I want both of these because they will do different things for me. Okay. The nice thing about a walking foot, like I said already multiple times, it works for anybody and everybody. Okay. But the digital dual feed foot also lovingly known as the move it foot M U V I T is a whole different design. This foot is, is made so that it literally plugs into a machine. So you can tell right away if you, this machine, if this foot is available for your machine by looking at the back of your machine at the back, you know, the head area behind where the presser foot is. If there's not a plug there, this foot's not designed for your machine. Um, this was designed, it came out when we had the dream machine and there are, there are really quite a good list of models that it, that it works on with the dream machine. It came with the machine with the luminaire it comes with the machine, but it is available separately for machines that have that, that plug in the back. Okay. And Angela, I think you're going to go ahead and go over to your machine and, and attach this. So while you're doing that, I'll talk a little bit more about it and how it was made and how it was designed. Okay. Sounds good. And I have it already. Um, I also have the screen to show. Um, so do you want to show the screen first or do you want me to attach it first? Um, why don't you go ahead and attach it and I'll talk a little bit more about, about how it's how it's designed. Okay. Sounds good. So again, this is a heavy foot. If we put this on a scale, this, this is a hefty foot. And you can see right away, size-wise, it's a completely, completely different. So this foot is is designed to roll where the other remember i said i said at the beginning we're talking walking walking feet and rolling feet this is a rolling foot this has a belt and it's belt driven so this belt will actually roll while you are stitching with this foot and what's so different about that is this is adjustable so that rolling wheel can be adjusted 
because it's plugged into the machine, it has a brain now. This foot actually has a motor and, a, and it connects with the brain of, the, of your machine. And so there are settings on your machine where you can tell this belt to either roll faster or slower. Okay. And in, in a minute, once you get all set up, we'll, we'll show you that on the screen. Now, this um, foot also is designed to screw right onto your machine. So you don't need any shank adapter. It's already designed to um, match up to that high shank because it'll work on, on all of those high shank machines that we, that we talked about. Okay. So again, it, it has a whole different, whole different um, size to it. Now, when you put this foot on the machine, you will see that there's not a lot of clearance between the bottom of the foot and your fabric layers and the feed dogs. So if you, Angela, if you just like lower that foot for sure. a minute. So I've attached it. Again, it's just one simple screw right here to attach. Yeah. I'll just bring this a little closer. It's not Friday, so we shouldn't have Blinky in the room. <laughs> Good. All right, let's see. So you can see. And right see, there. when you put that down, if you like, just put like a piece of fabric near there, you'll see it. It the the put it put it back a little further so that the back of the foot actually sits on it. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now you can see that foot is pretty much like if you had to pull that fabric out right now, you'd have a little bit of a hard time because there's it's oh, yeah, that big heavy foot is sitting on there. Okay. So what I've seen is a lot of people writing comments, questions saying, oh, my, my move it foot, I can't use it on my quilt because it's getting, it's getting stuck. Well, that's why they made a walking foot <laughs> because a walking foot has more clearance. So this foot wasn't designed just for quilters. It, it'll work on quilting, but your layers have to be of a thickness that it can still feed smoothly through. So if you're using, you know, big puffy batting, this is not going to give you the, the, you know, that much clearance. Now you can still, you know, you can ease out your fabric from the back, but you're going to be, have to be very careful. Whereas a walking foot would have a lot more clearance on the back. Now, why did they make it that way? Why, do, why couldn't they make this foot, you know, so it sets up higher? Well, it just, it wasn't designed to, to do that. It was designed to have this big motor in it so that we could control that belt and, and make that belt work faster or slower all by means of the settings on, on the machine. So Angela, if you go over to your screen, if you could show your screen. Yeah, before I go over there, I just want to point out this little button here. Yep, so yep, sure I was going to talk about that. Engaged. It, so you can be sewing and not use, you decide you don't need the dual feed feature just lift this up and then it sews normal if it's down i'll get my hand out of the way so it's this yep. right here yep thanks for pointing that out exactly i was going to talk yeah, about that's that a, but that's an important one because if you have it up and you're thinking why is this not working if it's up like that it actually lifts that panel and it's it's sewing like a regular foot so very sure important yeah very important because you will get you will have um more clearance when you when you do that. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, I don't know. If you're sewing along and maybe you're in an area where you don't want that belt to be contacting, then you simply lift that lever and now you're sewing, like you said, like a like a regular like a regular foot. It's just putting a little bit of pressure on there. But having this belt and having your setting mode allow you to adjust that. So the little um, looks like a little note page on on the machine. That's the other way you would know, you know, if you're using this foot, you have to have that little note page feature. And when you touch that and page through the, the settings. I was just pointing out the foot, how it tells you the F right there. Yeah. Then you know it's plugged in and it's ready to work. Yep. <laughs> yep. It's, it's, it, it recognized it because it's plugged in. Exactly. So I can't remember what page it's on, um, but you'll see an actual setting for page the two. digital page early two. page two on the luminaire. Okay. Very good. And on that page, it will allow you now to change this speed of the belt. Now for a lot of things, when I use it, um, I don't really need a difference in the speed. I'll tell you why you would, but I don't really need a difference in the speed. I just need, um, 
you know, to see what that setting is. So dual feed adjustment, you have yours at uh, plus 06 right now. So why don't you go ahead and touch the arrow and change it to um, just the zero. Should have a, uh... right, okay. So what that means is the, the belt is working. The belt will roll, the rolling oh. foot. Sorry about that. Okay. But it will just simply go at an even rate, just a smooth, even rate. So for a lot of things that we're sewing, that's going to be absolutely fine. You might be sewing two layers of silk. You might be sewing, you know, um, a little bit of a, of a thinner fabric or even a little bit of a thicker fabric. And you, you, you're just, you just want to have that belt driven so that it's, it's coming in contact and rolling your fabric through nice, nice and smooth. Now, if you experience with your layers where the, um, the top layer that you're sewing ends up longer than the bottom layer, that's where we take advantage of the dual feed adjustment. And we would go to that key and we would start testing now by using the plus key. Because every time you touch the plus key, or every time you touch the, you know, the plus number, plus one, plus two, plus three, it moves that belt a little bit faster. And you know what happens when the belt moves a little bit faster? It eases the fabric in. So it's the same thing as if I were, you know, kind of fingering that fabric in to get it to ease in a little more, a little more, a little more. So the higher you go on that plus scale, the faster that belt moves and the more it eases in the fabric. Now, if you've ever had the opposite situation where your bottom layer comes out, you know, um, comes out a little bit longer, a lot of times we comp, we, you know, we're used to compensating for all this with our hands, with our fingers, with our pins, you know, with stilettos, whatever. But when that happens, when your bottom layer comes out longer than your top, what that means is you need to kind, you needed to pull on your top layer a little bit more so that it, it, you know, it, it got stretched a little to match up with that bottom layer. So if you go in the negative, now you know what happens? That belt moves slower. And when the belt moves slower than it would normally, it forms a natural stretching effect. So it, it will actually stretch out the um, top layer of your fabric so that it matches your bottom layer better. I hope yeah. that makes sense. <laughs> and that was a great description for that as well, because um, and testing it is really, really what the bottom line is when you're working on this, just to test it. Um, I mean, because you just someone I've had someone say, do I go up number plus three or four? I'm like it doesn't. It depends. It depends on your fabric. Yep. It depends the, on the project. Exactly. It's a little bit like I guess the you know, I've never heard it really termed this, but the using the move it foot is a little bit like having differential feed on on your machine, um, on your sewing machine. When we use differential feed on a serger, it moves the feed dogs faster or slower. So it creates easing. Just remember, um, anything on the plus side creates easing. Anything on the minus side creates stretching a little mm -hmm. bit. OK, now they absolutely designed this foot for quilters. Absolutely, positively. But again, it depends on the type of batting and the layers that you're using. So I think, you know, most of us, most of us today that are quilting in in large part are using the thinner, the thinner type of, of batting. Right. You know, there used to be in a day and an age when the, the big puffy, uh, I always called it buffalo bat you know, the really thick stuff. Well, in most cases, when you're doing that, you're going to do tacking type of quilting anyway, where you're, you know, that was popular when they people were doing hand tied quilts because mm -hmm. they could get, you know, the more you tied it, then the puffed out in those other areas. But our, our lower layers of, of batting today work really, 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 really well with this foot. Just make sure, you know, that you've got it engaged, like you pointed out, very important and use your adjustments, test it out, and then um, make sure it's you have some smoothed out in the back. I think another problem with, with what happens with this foot is people put this foot on and maybe your, maybe your machine is set up so that you have a wall just a few 
inches behind you. And if your fabric gets jammed up against that wall and it's, you know, kind of trying to escape from the bottom of this foot, it has nowhere to go. So you have to help it just a, just a little bit. Yeah. And uh, so this also answers, uh, she says, can you use decorative stitches? With yep. this? That was the next thing I was going to talk about. That is the other thing that makes this foot shine is this foot will work with backwards style stitches, which are decorative stitches go backwards in, in order to form that. Um, and it's because that belt can move backward as well as, you know, and, and coordinate with that. So the nice thing about, about decorative stitches with the move it foot is that there's no way to make a mistake because unlike the, you know, the uh, dynamic foot, I told you, you can use this with all of your seven millimeter decorative stitches that don't go, you know, outside the boundaries of that, of that seven millimeter um, feed dog area. But the move it foot does have um, some stitches that work better with it. So when you plug this in, it's, it's like, you know, it, it, it takes over and your machine knows what stitches you can select and what you can't. And it literally will not let you select a decorative stitch that is not appropriate for this foot. So. I think I can show that on here, Joanne, because I think that's one of the best, the best things here. So when you go to your decorative stitches, Let's just say, do you see yeah. all these are grayed out? Let me bring yeah. it up just a little bit to compare. There's two that are not grayed out. And I know it's a little bit dark. I've got the sun is shining, <laughs> thankfully, on my camera today. But uh, these two are not grayed out. So I can use yeah. these. But if I press this one, it says this stitch does not work. So you can't screw it up. That's the, that's the best part. And then here... If I go to click on this one, it'll show me the stitch. It says it's okay, and we're good to go. So um, you really, and I could scroll through and show quite a few of these. All of these are okay. This one's grayed out. So you, you just know, and even on some of the older machines, if it's not grayed out, when you click on it, it'll just say that you can't. Yeah, you get that little sad face. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and if you can use it, the stitch will show up over here, and you're good to go. And that's such a that's such a great feature for that. Yeah, definitely. So again, you know, I I'm I'm thrilled to have this new dynamic walking foot now because now I can use this for for everything. Now, yeah, if I already had one of these, you know, yeah, fine, okay. But you know, when new things come along, we replace it. You know, we replace it, and we and we start using what's new. And new developments happen all the time. New technology, and when they invent something new that works with your machine. Grab it because you know those accessories really in in the long run are are going to expand your sewing repertoire and you know in the, price wise once you invest in it it's it's a good tool it's, it's definitely a good tool to have so yeah. now the other great thing about the digital dual feed foot is that they they designed it they did design it for quilters like I said but they designed it to work on a wide variety of other fabrics too you know sewing linings and slippery fabrics and plaids and stripes and all yeah, those I, things. I saw someone on here say great for plaids. Definitely. Definitely. But this, the, the front foot snaps off really easy. Boom. It's gone. And there are many, many other accessories that you can get. One of them is a quarter inch foot. So let me hold that up so you can see it. So if you're doing patchwork and you're doing patchwork on all kinds, you might do, be doing patchwork with satin. You might be doing patchwork with flannel. You might be doing patchwork with all kinds of different fabrics that you would like to use a, a quarter inch seam, but you want to have the, the ability to have your fabric feed, you know, really nice and neat. You, a lot of times you don't even have to use pins. Well, you could snap this right onto the move it foot and you are good to go. You're ready to, you're ready to sew with a quarter inch. That blade will line up perfectly for your quarter inch, quarter inch seam. So what about other things? You know, stitch in the ditch. That's another, that's another sure. popular foot. Go ahead and hold that up one more time, Joanne. Stitch yeah. in the ditch has the blade right in the middle. So again, if I'm doing, you know, um, decorative type work on, on a quilt and I want to, you know, stitch in the ditch and hold all those layers together, I can use a decorative stitch or I can use a straight stitch, but I can have that guide 
line right up with my seam or my seam allowance or my edge or my binding, whatever I need to use it for. And I get all the advantages from that adjustability of that move it foot. And I have the specialty accessory as well. So there's also an open toe foot. And then there's also the couching attachment, which I just brought just the parts to show you that. And that also snaps on to the move it foot. So there are many, 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 many ways to use the move it foot for mm -hmm. many, many different things. There are lots of different options for those um, for those walking foot. So you just got to think, do I need to walk or do I need to roll today? <laughs> what What's going to work best with my project? And, you know, the more the more, you know, the more you sew. That's my my friend Amy from uh, Amy Bachman, uh, brother dealer. She says that all the time and she's absolutely right. The more you know, the more you sew. Definitely. Tanya says, I'm taking this one out of the box now. And you might be surprised. I mean, of course, a lot of times we're using uh, the Luminaire or one of the newer machines, but this is not just available on that machine. So check your machine because th this came with quite a few other brother machines. And it's available as an option for, for several machines, definitely. So like I said, you know right away, if it doesn't have that hole in the back, there's no plug for it, you know, and you don't have the setting for it, it's it's not an option. But um, yeah, yeah you, Janice, course. you will enjoy, you will enjoy this like immensely, definitely. <laughs> so, and there's even other accessories. And I don't know if I brought everything here. Um, one is a, look, the, yes. the, I don't the know if guide. I don't get stitched, but I can go look. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I'll the, go look. the move it foot. Yeah. Why don't you, why don't you check that out? I don't remember. I don't remember either. Do you remember what number stitch that is? If anybody remember, it'd be you, Joanne. I would not. I'd have to scroll. Yeah, I don't remember the number, and I um, I can't see your screen as good as I. Sh it looks, you know, you you'd have a bar on the left, and then uh, it looks like a hat, like a ladder that's broken on one side. Yeah, I think this is it. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, yeah, it works on that. Okay, great, great. It it works with a lot of you know. It's just, again, it's the whole the movement of the stitch, which. That's the one thing I, uh, you know, one of the things I love about the way this dual feed foot works is that I don't have to guess. Oh, maybe that, oh, maybe that stitch has, oh, maybe it doesn't move backwards too. Uh, I don't know. You know, you don't have to know. It's it's going to, it's going to tell you. It's going to tell you what to do. Uh, here's one. Bell cats. <laughs> I like that. Uh, would the move it foot work best on curved piece, piecing shapes? That's interesting. I would, I would say it would definitely help. Absolutely. Because again, you've got now, what are you, what are you sewing when you sew curved, curved shapes? you you are sewing partially on the bias. When you, the more mm -hmm. you get around that curve, the more it is on the, on the bias. So definitely, I would definitely um, consider, consider using that. And, you know, just so you know, most of what I talked about today, I mean, not, I don't have anything written up on this foot yet, but I will very soon. There are uh, tutorials, and again, I'll link to all of that in, in my post. And I, I even wrote a whole tutorial on that little S adapter and how to use that because it can get confusing. You got a big screw, you got a little screw. Where's, you take out all the screws, where's the screw go back once you take it out? And so, I actually have this, your last blog post up, and I was going to point this out. Um, in here, it shows you, she did a really good job showing you to remind you to make sure that this, in case my hand got in the way while I was trying to show you this. <laughs> And also, um, how to attach it, which is right here. Great photos, Joanne. And then here's the backside that we were talking about, that that's how it's attached to the machine. So the machine, it, ha it gives the foot a brain, I guess is what you'd say. Exactly. Exactly. And then here's the second one that you have. And I love this right here because a lot of people don't understand how to put that in place. Yeah. And you can put it in either way, to the right or the left. Mm-hmm. Actually, yep, they, they give you two so that you can use them um, right or left. And then the other guide that cut for the regular walking foot, um, that works the same way. And it'll also work in the dynamic walking foot. So let me actually slide it in here. We could show that in a minute. So this is available as an, yeah, that the little guide that you see there. Mm -hmm. One for the right, one for the left. If you're using the, the move it foot, I show you how to attach it. But um, that is a separate accessory. So there's lots of accessories for that move it foot. Yeah. And then this is the accessory for any of the other walking feet. See that arm right there? It slides right into that hole. And then you can literally slide it closer 
or further away, whatever distance you want your, your spacing to be for your lines of stitching. So this is available as an extra accessory and it will work in, um, it will work in most of the walking feet. If you have a really old one, I'm not sure, but it'll, it'll work in most of the walking foot. It'll certainly work in this new one. Yeah. Okay. That's great. So, and I see we're getting a few questions like, what about, you know, faux leather? Well, you know, the if, if you have this foot, if you have the move it foot mm -hmm. and you're not sewing really thick layers, like I said, like puffy batting, this would be the first one that I would reach for because of the multitudes of ways that you can adjust it. Okay. So try this foot first um, and it, you should be able to get good results with um, a certain setting on this. If you don't have that option, then you, then you work with a walking foot. Right. Louise has a great question. You know, Louise, I don't think I've ever even tried to use it that way. You know how we can automatically have our foot go up with the pivot function? Uh, yeah. As far as I remember it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to go try it now. I've never used it. Yeah. I've never even thought of using that feature with it. I just always am on a mission. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Doing. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny how you forget things because, you know, what happens with us, I think a lot of times is, you know, we're not doing the same thing every day. We're doing right. something different all the time. And um, you, what happens to me anyway, and that's why I said I have to prepare for, you know, I, I like, I love questions, but sometimes I'd like to have them like beforehand so I can refresh my, because I'm like, some things I do so automatically that I don't think about it. Right. I don't even think about it. Like, yeah, I get, I, yeah, probably. Cause I'm just doing it like that all the time. So, but you know, um, I agree with that totally. And also the person that was asking about the faux leather, uh, if you go to the blog dot com, I did a post a couple years ago using faux leather and I actually have a jacket, which I believe is downstairs where I would go get that. Um, but I did, it was faux leather, just a very inexpensive yeah. vinyl, actually <laughs> faux leather sounds better, but, yeah. <laughs> and fleece. And yes. I tacked them together. Maybe some of you saw that episode. I remember I that. Told. I remember that. It was beautiful. Yes, and so I did that on It's So Easy. And I actually used that Move It Foot to quilt those together. And you can see, if you want to just test that foot out, that is a great way you can see if the fleece is too, if the, so the fleece is on the bottom, full leather on the top, you start stitching. And you'll know by the time you just do one little sample to, to see how much you need to adjust it you'll see that fleece either shorter or longer. And when it's perfectly straight, that's your setting. And I was able to do a beautiful different uh, quilt. I did rows together. I did, I created an entire look for number one, a book cover. That's really easy to do. And it yeah. makes a great gift, by the way. <laughs> and also the jacket, it looks like there's uh, a yoke and all these different seams. And all it was was playing with some quilting using that foot. And I was able to do that on every piece. And because I had the setting set just right, I was able to quilt all the pieces lined up and it looked great. It's still one of my favorite jackets, although I haven't worn it for a while because it's kind of like the COVID outfit is <laughs> a knit top and leggings, but uh, it's going to be a great spring top. And it's a great one that maybe I'll have to think about doing maybe a sew along with because it's a great idea for quilting. And if you don't have that foot, you can still quilt, but it really was a great opportunity to use that foot and to see what it does. Yep. Yeah. And uh, you know, we got some, we got great thinkers with us here today. So we got some good questions. I see Lucy saying on the luminaire, we have the, she says blazer, but I'm sure she meant laser. <laughs> we have, I, the la saw that. <laughs> I used, why well, use the guide? Well, you know what, use what, what works for you and use in combination as well. I like having a guide and, a, and I like having a laser too, but that guide is, it's big and it's thick and it's obvious. And on some fabrics, you know, some colors, you, you know, prints and things like that, you may not see that laser completely follow all of those colors, you know, the way you need it. So use both, use it in combination and, you know, use whatever you feel most, most comfortable with. So a lot of times I, I will, you know, add those things together and it just makes things, just makes things better. I agree. And bell cats, no, all of the feet do not come with the move it foot. I mean, it depends what package you're getting or, you know, which machine you have, but it, but they are extra. Um, and just check with your dealer for, sometimes they have bundle packages where you can get them all together. Yeah. But, 
And what you have to realize too, like, okay, here's the stitch in the ditch foot, which is this one right here. Okay. This foot was born far before this foot accessory was born. Okay. They're not even, you know, they're not even close. So, so, you know, what they do is we just keep getting things that are added on. So somebody's asking me for the stitch in the ditch. Um, the guide for the quilting guide for the move it foot. Uh, SA204 is the stitch in the ditch. Oh, One. Thanks, Robin. oh, what was it again? Let me type it in while you do that. SA204. I'll put it up close to the camera there. SA204. It'll look like brothers writing it. Yep. It's and brothers actually, <laughs> brothers contributing in here and giving us the information. And SA205 is the quarter inch foot. And again, I have tutorials on the Brother Sews blog on I think every accessory that that we have for the move it foot. And your information is always so detailed. Well, thank you. I love doing it because I know, you know, from I like to break it down so that you're able to really um, you know, see it visually. We love doing these live shows and it's great to have, you know, have samples and Thanks, see Kelly. people sewing, but it's also good to have something you can refer to later and, you know, have all those pictures and have all of the, 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 the settings listed in there. So if you yeah. like what you see on the brother blog, please make sure you leave your comments there because the only way we know that you're getting something from it and the only way brother knows you're getting something out of those tutorials and posts is with your with your comments. Here it's obvious when Angela's on and she's got all her great guests on, you know, for Brother Sews, um, your all of your comments here are, are are seen by everybody and we know we know we know what you're thinking. But on the Brother blog, it's important if you leave your comments. Yeah. And so hey Lucy, by the way when it depends what you're doing. So if you want to test your stitch on something, if you know you're going to be doing a decorative stitch, I would use that with a small piece of fabric to test it because if a straight stitch might move the fabric differently than the decorative. So if you're just going to do quilting and you're just using a straight stitch, I would use that. But if you're going to use a decorative stitch and you want to make sure then I would do that. And you know, it's funny. Um, I, one thing that I've been doing a lot of Joanne, which I really enjoy, is using that move it foot on two layers of knit. I have quite a few colors <laughs> and I've been working on, it's uh, like a scuba knit. Uh -huh. And when I put the scuba knit, either two layers of scuba knit or scuba knit with a very thin layer of fleece. You know, I'm into fishing seasons on its way yeah. here. <laughs> Actually, I think it's here. And I love having really comfortable jackets that I make, of course. And that scuba knit is so soft. It's a little thicker, kind of, uh, for those of you that have no idea what that is, it, it kind of like a fleece, but it has a very shiny, soft end. So it's not, fleece is more uh, cushiony. Yeah, it's <laughs> and, spongy. It's almost like spongy a little yes, bit. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I <was> like, <laughs> here comes our uh, episode of. <laughs> and, and when I layer those together and do a few rows of stitching, I've even used the twin needle on that and, and come up with some great lines it looks like a completely different fabric yeah that's Little so thicker, fun. great for a jacket so i can use just a plain fabric like just the regular fabric with no quilting on it for the sleeves because that's pretty comfortable and then add some embellishing with that look and it's been a lot of fun so that's what i've been working on lately joanne Ooh. so i was so excited when you were going to talk about these oh pieces. i can't wait to see the finished finished pieces that sounds like a lot of fun yeah something very <laughs> That's Everyone, good. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, you can keep your questions coming. And Joanne has a fabulous newsletter that comes out every Sunday, usually every Sunday. I mean, yep. I don't, yep. I've never seen you miss Pretty one. Pretty much. I, I, I send it out late on Saturday night. So some, you know, it depends on if you're still awake, you might get it on Saturday night. Most people read it on, on Sunday. Yes. Oh, Cindy, I agree. So if you're watching this on YouTube and you never want to miss another one of these episodes, be sure to subscribe to the Brother Sews, we're on Brother Sewing and Crafting. You subscribe and you'll get a pop-up every time that we go live. And if you're on Facebook, be sure to follow Brother Sews. I know they're, I think they're taking away the likes here eventually and moving it all to follow. So make sure you follow and then 
you will also be notified when we go live and you won't miss a show. So yeah, any more questions we're missing, Joanne? I should mention that I'm not sure if the blog comments are currently live because we're 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 mo we're having we're moving right now. So you know, just like if you were moving your household and I asked you, you know, pull out your your favorite set of dishes, well, they might be all packed up right now. So <laughs> we're kind of packed up on the on the brother blog. But please, once it's um, you'll get a notification that it's gone live and everything's you know moved over. Make sure you go in and check all these resources and and leave your comments. Okay. We appreciate yeah. it. And feel free, to, you can always reach out um, and, and connect with me um, through my website, letsgoso.com. And I answer all my emails myself and try to take care of you and help you out. So Wonderful. Well, Joanne, it's been great to see you. Brother Sewing and Crafting Family, this has been a great week. Uh, well, we have a great week. It's been a great show today. So just so you know the rundown for the week. And why I do that, Joanne, make sure we're not missing any of the last little questions there. But we have... Cindy Hogan on this afternoon at 4.30 for Software Shut-In on Wednesday, which is tomorrow. <laughs> These weeks go by way too fast. At 1.30, I have my live show behind the scenes, and we're going to be sewing the tank top for the Rachel. It's the end of our Rachel twin set sew along, and I'll be announcing the next one, so you don't want to miss that. And at 3 o'clock, if Emily is not on spring break, I can't remember if she is this week, she has a show at 3, and on Thursday at noon again, uh, Barbara Jones is coming on, another brother educator. So we have a great week planned for you. So uh, Joanne, this has been so much fun. And also, Joanne didn't mention, if you go to her website down below, actually both of ours, we both always continue to put new shows on YouTube. So be sure to subscribe to our YouTube show channels as well. Yes. We try to stay connected however we can. And when you follow us, it's great. Um, and we love to see you there. Please do. We're always doing something new for you. <laughs> awesome. uh, Ibby, yes, all times Eastern. I'm sorry. I forget there's a whole world out there that's yeah. not Eastern, but all times are Eastern, yes. <laughs> and you're welcome, Shirley. Yeah. Wonderful. Everybody's saying thank you. Thank so you so much for all the great questions. Thanks for having me on, Angela. Thanks to Brother Sows for letting us do this. This is fantastic. Thank you so much. And everyone, have a great day. Joanne, great to see you. Cannot wait till the next one. Take care, everyone. Happy sewing. Happy sewing.